Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles, sunny Southern California. Today, our topic is going to be about awareness versus mechanicalness. And I'm going to get into this. I'm excited about this topic. Actually, I prepared and I wrote some notes last night. So <laughs> I was a good boy. I, I prepared myself. Normally, I'm very spontaneous. I may know what I want to talk about, but I don't take notes. But this time I did. So um, we're going to do a heart awakening uh, meditation. Uh, it's very simple. Some of you have done it with me before. What I would like you to do is simply uh, bring your attention inwards, as we always do, and bring your attention towards your heart chakra. So it's not something you need to think about. It's simply shifting your attention. You bring your attention from one area and you bring it to, to a different place. So normally, most of the time, our attention is on the other world, on the, the world outside. Like if there's a plane flying and your attention goes to it. If there's fire truck is driving and you're hearing the sirens, your attention goes there. Or if the kids are playing outside, they're making noise and your attention goes there. So what I'm asking you is to bring your attention inwards and dive into your heart. Dive into this place, which is the very source of your being, the heart. It's your we can call it the heart chakra. We can, say, we can say where your being resides. Whatever way you want to explain it and you relate to it, that's fine with me. So you bring your attention. If you want to put your hands on your heart area and then you feel, you're welcome to do that. So sort of bring your attention to this part of your body, the heart. And in that, you'll be amazed that a shift takes place. And it is the initiation to a transition and migration from the head to the heart. So you're initiating yourself and you're putting this transition into motion by simply diving to your heart, to the being. Going from a mental sort of exercise and activity from, from a place that deals with knowledge you are migrating to a place of knowing from and being. And as you shift your attention to your heart, we'd like you to take a deep breath. And in this moment, Put your story away, whatever is your story. Put the world's story away. Whatever has happened to you in the past, whatever are your concerns, your challenges, your obligations, whatever responsibilities that you have, they're not applicable in this moment because right now you're entering into the heart space and you put everything prior to this moment aside 
as if they don't exist. And we will not concern ourselves with the next moment or anything into the future. You have come to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. And this is a place that you can rest and relax and dive into the heart of awareness. You can, you're on a vacation right now. You're off the hook. It's like a timeout from your daily life, timeout from your children, your family, your parents, friends, work, whatever obligations that you have. This time is for you and you only and you're giving yourself an opportunity to dive into the heart of awareness and meet your being by simply being here and now. As you dive down to the heart, I would like you to visualize yourself as the Buddha. Visualize yourself at your highest level of consciousness the best that you ever want to see yourself. See yourself as that. That you're sitting in meditation. Somewhere very comfortable, whether it's the nature, whether you're in the mountains or you're on the banks of the river Ganga, you're in the desert, or maybe you're on a boat on the water, you're in a very comfortable, safe place. There's no th worries, no thoughts. No concerns of any kind, simply being here in this moment. And being being grateful. Feel your own being, the heart of awareness, and be grateful having the sense of being grateful for this experience of life, of being here and now, of being alive, being able to feel, to touch, to sense, to love, to feel pain, to feel pleasure, just being grateful for everything that you have in this moment. Bring your attention to that. Gratefulness. And since you are grateful for everything you have, you have no choice but to feel love and loving yourself for being here and now. And as you are in this relaxed, deep, meditative state. 
that you have given yourself an opportunity to reside in your own being and touch your own being and feel the love which is here. I would like you to repeat after me. and reaffirm to yourself that you love yourself. So repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself and I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 And as you say the final yes, and you really open your heart to love, I would like you to see and visualize that there is a ball of light at your, in your heart center, in your chest. And see, visualize this ball of light that with every breath you take, it's vibrating and it's expanding and contracting it's alive so the ball of light is moving and as you're breathing into it and you're centered and you're in this place of love and acceptance you're loving yourself and you're accepting yourself for being here for being an expression of the Absolute, being an image of God, an image of love in your form and shape, that God, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, is expressing yourself as you. Simply being here and now in gratitude and in love. Being in love with life. Being in love with being alive. Being in love for the sake of love. And this, you can feel the presence. You can see this light, ball of light, as you're breathing in and out, it starts to expand. And the light starts to grow. And this gradual gro growth it takes over your body. Your body is full of light. And 
now when as you have your eyes closed and you're examining your body you're taking a look at it within and you realize that your whole body is full of light and as you're breathing in and out the light is expanding Expansion. And as you're breathing and getting more comfortable in the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, which breathes within you. It surrounds you. It dances around you. It plays around you. It's your breath. It's your pulse. It's your presence. The light is expanding. And this expansion takes over your apartment, your room, your house. Its glow has taken over. It purifies the space that you live in. It cleanses anything that it touches by its power. So everything is transforming in your house. And as you are breathing in and out gently, settling more deeper in the state of silence, stillness and love the presence and the magnitude of love and light begins to expand and this light pierces through the boundaries of your house and starts to keep expanding to your neighborhood so suddenly from one person sitting in their house and meditating and coming to the level of self-love and acceptance and recognizing the divine presence the grace in their heart The power of love and light begins to transmute to the neighborhood. So now you begin to see that your entire neighborhood is affected by the love that has initiated from your heart. As you're comfortably breathing in and out, this love continues to expand. And now it's taken over the city that you live in, whether it's small or big, whether it's populated or has a small 
number of people living in it, it doesn't matter. This love doesn't understand time or space or boundaries. It cannot be limited. And it cannot be avoided. No matter who you are, what you do, where you come from, you're bound to feel this love. Now this light, this love keeps expanding and taking over the state or province that you live in. Everything began from a little tiny ball of light in your heart and now it has expanded to an entire state, entire province, an entire region that you are residing in. As you're comfortably breathing in and out, in being in a state of love, feeling the power of light, the power of love emanating from your heart. The expansion of the light takes over the country that you live in. It rapidly is growing and transforming anything that it touches. As love is the supreme power and force in this life. As light overcomes all shadows. Shadows could not exist without light. As you're in your deep meditation, present, available in this moment, and you feel the deep love and the light that is within yourself. And it's been unleashed to the world. This love that comes from you, this light that you have originated from your own heart is taken over the country you live. And it's not content with your country it's expanding to the continent that you live. All started from one person meditating in a room. And now it has expanded to an entire continent. As you're comfortably breathing in and out and you feel the presence 
of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the Light, the Love, the Light that comes from your heart is expanding beyond the continent that you live in, is traveling through the oceans and taking over other continents. And soon the light the love takes over the entire planet Earth. The entire planet Earth is in light, is touched by the love, and it's transforming into one huge giant ball of light initiated from your heart. That by itself should be a great indication to you that indeed you are not small and indeed you have the power to transmit love and light to the entire planet Earth. The power of light, the power of love coming from your heart is not content to the planet Earth. It's greedy. It wants to keep expanding to the other planets, into the space. It is as if it's picking up momentum and getting stronger as it's expanding. The laws of physics are broken. The more it expands, the more territory it wants. So this love, this light, keeps expanding, takes over our galaxy, and now it's to keep going and reaching other galaxies. love, the light keeps going forward, keeps expanding, and it goes beyond the limitation of your imagination and being transmitted to the entire universe, to all beings across the universe. Connecting everything through the light and having an impact on every single particle in universe by love. As you are in a deep meditation, completely expanded, channeling the power of light 
and love your attention begins to come back into the one pointedness of the vast presence of the majesty Lord God in your own heart and slowly slowly you begin to bring your attention back into your physical body feeling your senses feeling your skin your breath the temperature of the room your beautiful self bringing your attention back to your mission, to yourself. To your senses. And slowly, slowly recognizing the limitation of your physical body, its boundaries, and coming back into the body again. difference is that before we started our meditation you were vibrating from a different quality and now you can sense that you are in a deep relaxed state All is well in this moment. And your vibrations have changed. You have arisen your vibrations to a higher frequency. This is the frequency of love. frequency of light slowly slowly come back come back here re-engage with your body again Know that your presence, your being, your awareness, when it expands, it does affect and impact your surrounding. So that's the best gift you can always, you can ever give to the society by waking up to the truth of who you are recognizing yourself
And that's exactly what the system is designed to keep you away from. Because as the awareness expands, now I'm going to the topic of this week. Uh, for those of you, most of you, I recognize you've been here with me, so I don't need to go through the details with you. But if you have a question, you're welcome to write it in the chat box or wave at me. If your camera is on, I see you wave at me and I will unmute you or you can unmute yourself and ask me your question or you write it on the chat box and then we'll have an opportunity to talk about your uh, question. Um, for the moment, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between awareness and being mechanical. The marketplace, the society, the system, it requires you to be efficient, requires you to be robot, a robot. When you come here and we meet at the 5D Academy, you start to relax and you begin to dive into the heart. And as you are in this process of unwinding, it's like at the end of the day, of a hard day, long day of working, you come home, you relax, you take your shoes off, you put your feet up, maybe you pour yourself a glass of wine, Maybe you have a sip of a glass of wine, of wine and you're just unwinding, you're relaxing, you're just kind of diving into a very solid, relaxed state away from all the mental and activities and your challenges. You're allowing yourself to unwind. When you do come to the academy and we meet here, same thing begins to happen. As you're relaxing, the speed of your mind starts to mellow down. So you're slowly disengaging from this thought process or this emotional process. And it's a migration again from the head to the heart. And as you are migrating from the head to the heart, you are disconnecting from a analytical way of being, a, a system, a way of just thinking, 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 and a system that requires you to be mechanical and a robot. Your awareness begins to increase and expand. As awareness, as your awareness begins to expand and it increases, you're becoming self-aware. Self-awareness starts to take place and increase in awareness the less mechanical you're going to be, the, the less robotic you will be. The two cannot coexist in the same place. If you're aware, 
you're no longer a robot. You cannot be mechanical any longer because there is awareness here. When there is no awareness, you are a machine. Everything you do is a robot. A robot is doing it. And if you go back and look at your life, and if you examine the society, you can clearly see that the vast majority of society is robotic. They look like human beings. They eat. They talk. They reproduce. They have to dispose of their toxins. But they look like humans. They look like they're alive. They look like they can think, decide for themselves what to do. But they're robots. Especially if you're in a Western country, the Western world, that is very much focused on efficiency then their members need to be very efficient. Then you can see it's more robotic. Or if you're in the Eastern world, that they're very religious, then their members are like soldiers of religion. And they're different kind of robots. Ready to go to war and ready to be killed if need to without asking questions, without questioning anything. When you go into the system, you go to the marketplace, the system expects you to be efficient. It doesn't expect you to be aware. When you start working for a corporation, they don't want you to be aware. They want you to be a a yes person. They require you and train you to be very efficient at your work. This efficiency is coming from the machines because the machines are a machine is a lot more efficient than a human being. Humans cannot be as efficient as the machines. But the idea when you're working in corporations or in general, the idea is to implement the same mentality to you, to have you as less aware as possible and as efficient as it could be. So you work like a machine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Yeah? You get it? <clears throat> but your awareness is your real being. So you may go through a life of robotic reaction and behavior, but
but something inside you is crying out. You may not be aware of it. Something is wounded. Something is deprived. You may, most people, they don't know there is something missing because the soul is not there. They're very efficient. They work very hard. They're mo money-making machines, but something's empty inside them. They don't know what that thing is. But in being efficient, being trained for being mechanical, for being a robot, you, you may be earning a lot of money because you're really all you're thinking about production whether you're self-employed or you're working for somebody else it doesn't matter your all focus and attention is to produce so you can be you you may become very wealthy you become very powerful, you're very prestigious, you're very respectful, you're very successful in becoming a real estate tycoon or your business owner, multiple businesses or whatever you're doing, you'll be very successful at it. But you lose yourself in this process and you're not touched with your own self. Everything is about production. Everything is about being efficient. Everything becomes about being robotic and not feeling. Just doing and doing. <clears throat> so, if you do look at a lot of people and you look around yourself, you don't need to go too far away. Just look around yourself. And where there is no awareness, but there is efficiency, and yes, you're successful in all of those things, but in reality, it's all worthless. You have gone through life, and you have accumulated things, but you have not experienced and explored your spirituality. You are respectful. You're successful. You got prestige. But all of it is a waste of time. Maybe people put you on a pedestal and worship you, but you're empty inside. Because awareness is not there. You're big and bad and scary, but inside you is empty. So you have wasted your life. You have wasted a precious opportunity of self-realization 
to self-accumulation. And you can see it around the world. And some of you are expecting fairness, decency. You're angry about the world. You're angry the way it's going, the way it's destroying its resources the way human beings destroying our nature, cutting down on the trees, destroying good water, rivers, slaughtering millions of animals, bringing them into slavery, destroying the soil, destroying the air, putting a hole into the atmosphere. And then, You're upset that there is no fairness. Well, how do you expect fairness and decency on a planet of sleepy people? How can you expect such a thing on a planet that the majority of its population is robots? That's not a smart expectation. You can't expect them to be fair because they're machines. They're not human beings. They look like human beings, but they're not. Their mission is to be efficient, to consume, to destroy, to take over, to conquer. Not about preserving or expanding or sharing, or caring. It's oriented towards gain at all cost. Because awareness is not there. Now, do you know how many people, do you have an idea how many people have lived on this planet? before you billions of billions of human beings have come and go on this planet before you come these before you were born a lot of these people were successful very known at their time, very prestigious at their time, highly respected at their time. But you don't remember, you don't know any of their names. In the moment, in their era, they were very, very known for their accomplishments, for their success, for their wealth, for their power. But you don't know their names. They just like wear like these bubbles, soap bubbles. You know, you wash your hands with the soap, you put the soap away and there's a bubble on it. And then 10 seconds after the bubble burst open and it's finished and it's never there, never been there. Only a few people <clears throat> who died and however they continue living on today. Maybe this person died 2,000 years ago, but this person is still alive today. And you know their names. You have heard their names. People like the Buddha, Christ, 
Rumi, Kabir, Latsu. These are the people who expanded their awareness. They were in con con concerned about being successful and being efficient. That wasn't their goal, to be efficient. They were interested in awareness. Those who were interested in being efficient, you don't even know their names. And those who were interested in awareness, 2,000 years after, 3,000 years after, they're still living today. But they weren't efficient. And they worked on themselves, they expanded their awareness, their vibration began to raise to a higher frequency, and as their awareness expanded, they never compromised. They didn't compromise their awareness for being efficient, for being successful, the successful that we look at in 21st century in our society, that everything is about efficiency, is about being mechanical. is about production. But at what cost? What is the cost of this efficiency and producing? The cost of it is a sleepy planet. The cost of it is being a robot, robotic. The cost of it is that for you never question things. not questioning things. You don't question your authorities. You don't question your teachers. You don't question life. You're not interested to know why you're here, why you were born. You're thinking about being efficient. You're thinking about a pattern that they implemented in your mind. You grow up, you go to school, you go to college, you're thinking about making more money, you get married, you drop a couple kids, and you keep working and becoming more powerful and more efficient and more mechanical. Oh, everybody's doing that. Everybody's getting married and having kids. Well, why? Why are you getting married and having kids? What's the point in that? Oh, because you make a family and da 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 da. You never question that. Have you ever questioned that? Why you should get married and have children? Has it ever been a question for you? Oh, because we need to reproduce. Well, that's the answer they give you. Why you go to church, or why you da 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 da, or why you have to go to school? Why you have to go to the army? Why you have to follow anybody or any leaders or whatever? Why do you have to cut your hair short 
or why I, you ever question these things? Why do you have to follow your parents' footsteps? Why do you have to follow your idols like actors, actresses, singers, athletes? Why do you have to wear the same clothes they wear or haircut or whatever they do? Why do you have to become vegetarian or vegan or meat eater or follow the new trend? Do you ever question that? Or you just do it? You work on your awareness and you make your awareness sharper. You work on increasing your awareness. And next time you go to the marketplace, you go into the system, the work system, maybe you're not as successful as your cousin. So what? Maybe you're not as efficient as your sister. So what? You're still getting the job done. You're making a living. You're doing your life. But you have awareness. You're aware. You have an awareness of what you're doing. You know why you're here. You know what you want in this life. Not because of what they implemented in your mind oh my dad wanted me to be a lawyer my dad wanted me to be a doctor my dad wanted me to get married my dad wanted me da 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 or my whatever whatever is that story what do you want Why do you have to follow this model? Oh, everybody gets married or everybody gets to have some kids. Why? Maybe everybody likes to go jump off the bridge. Why do I have to do the same thing everybody else does? Oh, why don't you have any kids or why don't you want to be married? Well, why should I? My suggestion to you, my brothers and sisters, is risk everything in your life for awareness. But never, ever risk awareness for anything. Never compromise your awareness for being efficient, being mechanical, being a robot so you can produce more. Your awareness is the seed of godliness in you. It's through the expansion of your awareness that you reach enlightenment, full awakening, 
and freedom. Not through being efficient or keep producing. That's not going to get you home. That keeps you trapped in samsara. That keeps you a slave. And you've been a slave for thousands of years. And now that we have this form of communication, that we can reach out to each other, and there is information flow and availability, then you have no excuse to remain a robot. It's your responsibility that if you come across this information, to take advantage of it, to free yourself from the bondage you've been in for all of your life. Forget about past lives or future, this life. Examine yourself. Take a look at yourself, please. Just see how you react through the news. And tell me how aware you are of your emotions. The moment you get some kind of unpleasant news, whether whatever that is, your child got in an accident, something's happened, or they're sick, or you get news about the world, or whatever is event happening in the world, just observe yourself. That's what I that's what awareness is. Just observe yourself of how you're reacting to it and your ups and downs. Look at yourself and see how you are centered your happiness based on the news you get, based on what is happening in, in your utter world. And when something's not going your way, you're thrown off completely balance. I hear from a lot of you coming to me, oh, I'm really worried about my kids. I'm really worried about the business. I'm really worried what's going to happen in the future. Well, you're not worried when things go your way. So how come you don't say that to me then? And how come you don't come to me when everything's going right in your life? Why do you come to me when things aren't going well in your life? Because awareness is not there. So you haven't learned the very fundamental things that your emotions, your thoughts, could very easily be influenced by some news, whether it's true or not. You don't know if something really happened in another country or not, or another land or whatever, or what is going on in the atmosphere or in our oceans. You get some news. What if the news is not accurate? What if it's fake? What if they made a mistake? What if the research wasn't right? But your emotions are ups and downs and you're thrown off of your center. So you're influenced easily by these things. You haven't discovered how to stay in your center, detached from what kind of news you, you're receiving, what kind of thoughts comes into your mind, what kind of emotions you're experiencing. Because you want to be efficient, because, you want to, because you've been trained to be a robot, producing, production. And in that, you lose your soul, you lose your spirituality. You lose 
what's really essential and it's the very fabric of your being. Forgetting about the heart of awareness. But you can't get away from that if you come to me because I'm not compromising my teachings and what I share with you and the work for being efficient or financially successful or whatever. There's no compromise here. We're focused on one thing. The highest prize that ever any human being in this life can arrive to. And that's self-realization. That's freedom. Total freedom. Anybody has any questions for me? One other thing before we get into, excuse me, I'm just getting really hot here. Just one moment, I need it. It was cold, now it's hot. And I don't have air conditioning in my, in my studio, so. The... more you expand your awareness, the more you're becoming self-aware and awakened. So different parts of you, the sleepy part starts to wake up, the robotic parts begin to wake up. The more you begin to, the, the quality of your life begins to change. And this is something like, it's almost impossible to explain it to somebody who hasn't been touched and hasn't been exposed to the presence, to God, to discover their spirituality. It can't really be explained because they've never been touched. But the more that happens in your life, the quality of your life changes. You may be doing the same thing you were doing. Your finances may remain the same. You're living in the same house or whatever. But something has changed. A sense of gratefulness has taken over. An attunement with your heart has taken place. You are now following your heart and what what is right for you than just saying yes to whatever or no to whatever. So you begin to see that even though maybe in the other world nothing has drastic changed, but you operate from a very peaceful, centered space. And you can, you can feel, you can see that the quality of the moment you live in is different. And as you go forward and you dive in deeper and you're getting more tuned in, of course, it's natural for you to question things, to question your relationship, to question your environment, to question your, the authorities, to question the news, to question a book that you read. 
and to question your teachers. That is a natural phenomena that you are questioning things. It's a very healthy thing, thing to do because you no longer want to be this robot that when they press this button, you're going to be reacting this way and they press that button and that is going to happen. And it's very predictable. And you begin to recognize the small things in life, the subtle things in life, that they have value. Which before, you could not notice it because you are into being efficient. Being efficient is not going to allow you to stop and smell the roses because that's not efficient. Being efficient is not allow you to go out in your garden and sit there and just not do anything because you have to do something all the time. If you're sitting in a garden, then you should be posting on Facebook or on Instagram or something. You cannot just be. You remember earlier I said mechanicalness, being mechanical doesn't coexist with being aware. Because awareness doesn't need a reason. It's only when you're mechanical you have you need reasons to do things. Awareness doesn't ask you, requires any reasons. You're simply exercising your true nature. You're hanging out in your garden, maybe for one hour, and you're not being efficient. You're not accomplishing anything, but you're simply sitting there, smelling the air, looking at the wind, going through the bamboos, the trees are moving, you can hear the birds, and it's the first time you start to realize, wait a minute, there's a family of crows living around my house, they're talking to each other, I never noticed that. You're looking in your garden and you're finding groups of different vegetations that they have same pattern, same looks, and some are smiley, some are different, and you start noticing things, life, around you that you've never noticed before because you were too busy producing kids and cleaning after them or being a good wifey or being a good husband to produce and being efficient. So you missed out on life and the cycle of life. And of course, because you're efficient and you're robots and robots, they're going to react to based on their programming. So you're afraid of death, and you're afraid of birth, and you're afraid of this, and you're afraid of that. But you don't know why you're afraid of them, because you never examine your fears either. You never took the time to look at things or see why you're afraid of them. Have you ever looked at it? Have you ever spent five minutes really paying attention why you're afraid of whatever, of being broke, being homeless, being left out, losing someone, 
world changing. Have you ever thought about it? That why am I afraid of it? Or are you just afraid of it? Most humanity is never ever bothered asking that question. You've got a mind. God gave you a mind. You might as well use it every once in a while. Normally, you're haunted by it. And when you're using it, you're taught and conditioned to use it for being efficient. But you're not taught to question. That's one thing you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to obey. So when you're listening to the news and everything you're hearing, you're supposed to buy it and get afraid or get excited or get dressed to go to war or hate other races or other cultures or whatever because this is what you're supposed to do. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, uh... Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I, I, uh, this morning I was, uh, I got your message, actually, uh, but I, I was a good boy yesterday, a past couple of days, so I was... Uh, thinking about what am I going to talk about today. As I mentioned before, I've been having a, the academy for past four years. So when you are having for four years, uh, and you know, I don't interview other people. So it's, it's a solo mission. So I'm the one who every week talks about a new subject you do run out of topics Got after it. four years <laughs> so i did ask you all to uh write to me and i appreciate that you did so i haven't forgotten so i will talk about what, what you asked me to talk about next wednesday how's that and if anybody else has any other topic you want me to talk about, just write it to me. I'm starting to, I, I actually got, some of you did write to me, so I'm making a list of um, what you have asked me to talk about, and I'll go through all of it one at a time. But sometimes, yeah. you know, I get an inspiration or I get a hit that there's something comes up for me and I feel like I need to talk about that. And... Uh, yeah, just because ask up, you know, and the inspiration will come, what is needed to cover, or you can either repeat as well, right? Because what? it doesn't matter that we know and we already heard that, but you forget things, you know, because either you don't practice or you just don't take it in that much, or you evolve, so you need to, again, reminder. So why not, right? Absolutely. Where I'm asking the above, and here you are. You are the above <laughs> speaking to me. <laughs> but I knew you will not forget. But then I just wanted to just, uh, yeah, write it. To yeah, you. no, I, I, I did forget, and that you wrote it to me again. I remember. Yeah. But this, yeah. So That's sometimes good. something comes as an email. If I don't put it in my notes or put a note and just stays in the email, then the email gets buried. And I'll, you know, unless I just go, yeah. yeah. So I appreciate it. You're not bugging me by reminding me, actually. No. no. I'm not afraid even though, so. <laughs> good, I'm happy that you're not. <laughs> you really roasted us today, really good. That's really well, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy that, I, I'm happy I was of some value to you. You always are. Well, thank you. Thank you.
How are you, Maria? I'm talking to Maria Peterson. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Well, me too. I'm happy you're here. Hi, Tahia. Ta Tahia, did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, hi. How are you? <laughs> okay, how, how, do you, how do you pronounce your name? Tahia. 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 Uh -huh. oh, okay. Because the H doesn't sound. Mm -hmm. Tahia. <laughs> and you said you're from Brazil? Costa Rica. Oh, from Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where in Costa Rica? It's a La Juela. A La okay. Juela. Uh, Costa Rica is a very small country, only 5 million people. And, and it's small. I've <laughs> been in your country. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, nice. I, I went to, um, trying to remember where I went, to Montezuma. What? Ah, see. Si. Yeah, I, I mean, of course, yeah, so I stayed there for three weeks. Nice. Three weeks. <laughs> so next time you come, just call us. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Soon. Thank you. Very soon. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Very, very soon. Uh, Thank you for vida. your teachings. Oh, you're welcome. Pura Vida. Pura vida. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I, um, we're going to next wednesday is our academy and then right two days uh, three days after the academy on the 10th we're going to start the uh our self-awakening retreat so that's going to be on the 10th and we're going to be doing it for nine days straight two hours a day the reason I want it to be nine days, well, nine is my number. So that's seven and nine. There are two numbers I feel very connected and obviously five. <laughs> but nine, if I have to choose one number out of everything, number nine is, is the one. So, but I wanted to have some continuity. And I wanted to be... We talked about maybe taking a break in between and uh, catch up in case if we have problems with our equipments because you never know how things go. But then I was like, okay, I want to build up the energy. So imagine we have this every day and we come and sit together and the energy starts to build up. And a part of that build up of the energy is to to help you raise your vibrations to a higher frequency and then help you to sustain the, your new level of awareness so you don't fall back so as we build up the energy and it's consistent so let's say the totality of the group, the energy, the vibration is vibrating in this level and the individual enters into the collective. So then you're rising your vibrations, you're being pulled up to match up to the collective and coming into the unified field. And when I'm able to keep you into a higher uh, vibrational frequency for a longer period of time, then what happens is things starts to change in you in cellular memory. Old information in cellular memory begin to dissipate and gets replaced by higher vibration of higher frequency 
information that is actually of use to you in the new era that we have entered. Because obviously, the other stuff, it was good enough to get us to where we're at. But where we are now and where we're going to, it's a different ball game. It's time to be awake. It's time to let go of our old ways. As you, you can also see, all the changes in the world are happening. So I'm also thinking I'm going to have a four-day retreat after the uh, this retreat that we're doing, and I will be offering another one. Uh, it's a paid event, of course, um, and focusing specifically on how we can raise our vibrations to a higher frequency and how we can sustain it. Because what happens is this is what I've seen. This was my experience. And it's very, very typical phenomena that happens in with a lot of spiritual teachers, a lot of gurus. Um, and I've been a part of it. Is What happens is that we get when we do a workshop we get very high in the workshop so you're with your teacher and they're capable of raising the vibrations to a higher frequency and you get really high from it and you feel very good you're really happy it's wonderful and you ride that high for let's say for a week or two or whatever but then as you all have experienced it, there's a crash. You start falling back into your old ways. And then you want to go and do another workshop with your teacher because you want the high. Naturally, we all want to feel good. So and that's what I'm trying to avoid. I want to be able to teach you and share with you what I've learned. And I'm trying different ways. And it's a working process. It's getting sharpened to how can I help you sustain a higher frequency and remain in a higher level of awareness all the time not just when we're doing the workshop when you're on your own when you're left out in Timbuktu by yourself when everything goes wrong in your life and you can still remain that level stay in that level and that's one of my quests, my mission, my challenge. I challenge myself to create a system, a way, a form of a teaching that I can succeed in that. Not again just for a weekend or a week or two or three weeks, but creating something that I can transmit it to you and teach it to you that you can sustain that level all the time. So you don't go to these ups and downs and crashes. So, um, we'll be coming up, hopefully by Monday, I will design the program and I'll present it to you. That's one of the reasons that I 
created live training program. This is my um, tailor-made program. Uh, I've talked about it before and the live training program that I designed and so far thank God we had 100% uh, positive results from it and all my participants they have reached their goals or their life has extremely changed for the better because it gives me a chance to work with you on one-on-one -on -one basis and to create a tailor-made program for your needs specifically. And of course, it's a commitment to it. Uh, there is a financial commitment and there's time commitment. But I wouldn't want to offer that program to anybody who's not serious about it, regardless of the finances. Because I'm, I'm very interested in results. I want to see something's really changed, not just going to the motions with you. I like to see <laughs> Monica's. <laughs> Hi, Monica. I'm trying to unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Okay, great. So Monica, uh, I'm. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear I, you. I can uh, recommend <laughs> that course. I have been through it, and it's very good. My depression I have had for thirty years is gone at last, and I thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Yeah. You, you, you gave me a testimonial i you know i've been i haven't put it on my website yet but i thank you very much i'm gonna put put that on my website um i'm i mean every time i talk to you i mean i know of course you have become freed from your depression after 30 years yeah. but every time i i come to you i just get so happy and I think that's my reward yes. <laughs> of knowing that your life has transformed. And I'm happy with myself that I was able to be a part of something positive or God existence used me to channel this to you. So I'm, I'm honored. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice having you with us, always. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was the, because I, I was never able to offer a, an extensive program on a one-on-one -on -one basis that targets sp uh, specific individual needs because of my schedule. Because when you go back and forth between two continents and you go to, you know, basically I go to, I used to, used to, it's not happening right now. Hopefully it will happen in the future, but you go back and forth. Normally I go on a two month tour or six weeks, but it's intense. I mean, before you go on the tour, it takes you a good two months to prepare for it there's a you know if not more four two to four three months of preparation of a lot of administrative work uh, that you have to do your website your programs everything co coordinating it with six different organizers in six different countries all the places you have to say stay you know your planes tickets, everything, da, 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 da. there's a lot of stuff behind it that you have to do. So it chews up a lot of your time, even though I have help, but it still takes a lot of your time to do that. And so, and then you come back from your tour and a lot of times, the first week I'm dizzy, literally, physically I'm dizzy. 
And by the time you get over your jet lag and kind of pull yourself together that all of a sudden you're back and uh, you're not on the road and then you re-familiarize yourself with your life here again and get back into the rhythm of the life that you have here, uh, a month is gone. And then now you're in this process to get ready to go back on another tour or it's a retreat or whatever it is. So it, you may say, well, you can, you can manage working with two or three people, but emo mentally you're exhausted. You don't have that mental sharpness any longer. At least that's for me. Maybe there are other respected teachers that uh, maybe they can handle it, or, but that's how it is for me. It's like a mental exhaustion that you kind of need to recover because you're about to embark on another tour and it's not fair to anybody in any country that if I arrive there and I'm not 100%. So you have to be 100%, you have to be sharp, you have to be available and you have to be able to absorb and you're going to be there as a channeler, as a healer, as a spiritual teacher you have to be able to absorb whatever is being thrown to you and process that and be able to be available and be patient and be energetic. So I'm happy in a way, I mean, I'm not happy because there's pandemic and people have died from it or been threatened about it, but I'm looking at the positive side of this that it has given me an opportunity to be able to provide something of value to my community and be able to do and accomplish a lot of things I couldn't do before by being in one place because it's been like 10 years being on the road which I love it but it's also nice to be here and be able to connect with your family members and friends and figure, find a rhythm of exercising or eating better or sleeping regularly and just not being in an airplane or in a hotel room or Airbnb every week. So I look at the positive side of it rather than being focused on the negative. Yeah, I don't get to see you all in person, but then it's given me an opportunity to be able to offer the academy on a regular basis and and uh, design these other programs that I wasn't able to do it before. But uh, one of the good things came out of it was is the life training program and I can see now that the power of it how it's transforming people people so after the retreat our um, coming retreat the uh, the online global self-awakening retreat I would be ready to take new students on my life training program so I'm just putting it out there. If you're interested, you're welcome to contact me. And uh, the process of it is uh, I would like to meet with you for one hour before we go anywhere. And then I will share with you whether uh, I can help you or not. And what is it that I can do for you and how we're going to do it. For those of you who are viewing this on Facebook and Instagram um, or YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot answer your questions or respond to you when I'm doing our uh, academy uh, through Zoom. Uh, there's a bunch of different devices here. I can't look at these other phones or or give an answer on them it's just too much work for me it's and I lose my concentration so if you want to communicate with me I welcome you to join me 
uh, register to the academy, uh, come on our system Zoom, and then we can communicate in this way. I can see you, you can see me, you can talk to me verbally, or you can write to me on my chat box. So uh, we started the podcast a year ago, and it's it's picking up audience, and I'm getting positive reaction from people that they enjoy watching it. Uh, my podcast is address is Zaratustra 5D, and it's pretty much on all different all the channels that they offer podcasts. So you can check me out on Spotify, on SoundCloud, and all the other channels you can listen to it. We're not doing the meditation at the podcast. It's just strictly um, the teachings. So it's short, compact, and it doesn't take a lot of bandwidth when you're listening to it. So uh, if you're inclined to checking out and listening uh, to the old uh, recordings, there's a lot of different subjects. We're at, I think, number 75, or we have reached 80 different podcasts. We started it last year, and... Uh, and we keep adding up to it. As far as this recording goes, those of you who are on our email list are going to receive a copy of this broadcast. You get the whole hour and 45 minutes or hour and 50 minutes, including the meditation. We also simultaneously, uh, it's being broadcasted on Facebook and Instagram. And we put the copy of it on YouTube. And also, so you get the one hour, 45 minutes, including the meditation on YouTube. If you subscribe to my page, Zaratustra 5D, as well as we chop it up and we put it in 10 minute increments for those of you who don't want to go through the whole thing. Uh, minus the meditation. So they're all available, they're all out there. If you have any comments or feel like sharing your thoughts with me, you can write to me at zaratustra.tv. Uh, I'm sorry, info at zaratustra.tv. And my email, uh, my uh, website is zaratustra.tv. We update the website on a regular basis. Uh, and on the homepage, you can see whatever upcoming events we have and the new videos, podcast, everything's there. And if you go to the section of our products, we also have some free contents like meditations that you can go and listen to. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Many, many blessings to you. Namaste.